this is, for those of you who don't know, this is Sanit or Spicy Fan Design. He is a costumeer who works full time with Weta Workshop in Wellington. Works on all sorts of movies. Just recently he's done work on Wakanda Forever, the newest Avatar movie. He's worked on Lord of the Rings. If you have any questions at any point during the Lord panel, Lord just Lord. come on down and we can see if we can answer them. Can't always answer everything. But start off, um, tell us a little bit about your work at Weta. So my, my main role with workshop is them to do all the prototype with. Like all the hack armor that you've seen, like stuff for Power Rangers, Namor's costume there. Um, anything with the, any hard surfaces is my role is to turn that 2D image into a 3D object pretty much. So most of the time we use foam uh, because it's easy to use. Um, we can make a whole costume within a week, a couple of weeks. And then we also we can try on to um, one of our staff members who's the same size actors as well to make sure they can move around. So yeah, that's, that's, that's my main role there anyway. And you also do a little bit of work on the main stage for tours and things like that? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. When, like, when I first started there, I thought you know, I might be there for four days, I might get let go, but by staying at the tour space, I kind of keep myself in the company. So if, if another job come up, I'll be able to go back to the workshop again. So, so I've been doing that now, and I've kind of kept on going for the last 10, 9 years. But it's so much fun to interact with the audience. People come in, it's quite cool to see um, how much they enjoy the work that we did us. So recently you wrote a book, and it was all about your journey into cosplay and putting your Thai spin on cosplay. And can we talk a little bit about your accepting your heritage and trying to turn that into cosplay and how you've made that your point of focus and your point of difference? Um, Ten years ago, um, I wanted to um, apply to Wiz Workshop as a concept artist. Um, we, we all love Lord of the Rings here, and um, I was super inspired by Alan Lee and John Howe before drawing, so I decided to put a portfolio together for Wiz Workshop. Um, probably about a month before I started to hand in my portfolio, I met um, guys named Warren Beaton and Kim Beaton. They were making a big dragon sculpture out of concrete. Um, so I volunteered a few hours of my day and we were talking, I showed them some of my drawings. I said, oh, these are beautiful drawings, but the, your proportions are a bit wrong. You know? The chest piece is too big. There's no way the guy can fold your arms. So I thought, sweet, then I'll, I'll make a costume then. You know? If I can make a costume and it functions, that will help with my, with my drawings. So that's, that's how I got started. So, went up to Auckland Armageddon, wearing my, my Thai Spartan um, 10 years ago this year. Um, worked out pretty well. Um, met some guys who worked at, um, at the booth called Trinity, Trinity Treasures. Um, they both worked at Weta at the time and they managed to find me a four day contract at Weta. And I uh, spent nine years in left since. That's pretty cool. <laughs> so the book pretty much explained my journey into making and how um, by adding my own, my own Thai heritage is um, my way of standing out and also my way to get in touch with my own culture. Um, I left Thailand when I was nine. Obviously when, you, when you're being a nine-year-old boy coming to a whole new country, you, you try to fit in to the, to the country. So I spent most of my teens not getting my, high, not getting my Thai heritage, but I was trying to be a Kiwi pretty much. Um, it wasn't until I was 21, went back to Thailand to be a monk for a while, and I realized that how much, how rich the Thai culture was, that when I came back home, I was actually, I was just actually studying fine arts in Wanganui at the time. And before I went away, all my artwork were quite like European or Japanese manga style drawings. I came back home, my Thai heritage is really, really pumped in. And when I first started off my whole prop making career, that wasn't my way of standing out. You know, just how, how am I going to stand out from everyone over in the States, over in Europe, who were making props at the time? My way is to have my, high, my Thai heritage there to make myself you know, look different from the crowd, pretty much. So what was the first thing you worked on while you were working for Winter Workshop? The first project, the first four-day project, um, that was Spectral. It's on um, Netflix. Have you guys seen it? Spectral? It's cool, eh? so it's, yeah. it's, it's almost like 
Ghostbusters meet Final Fantasy, that kind. I wish they made more. It was the, it was the such a cool story. It should be like a three part series or something. Um, and then I went on to make um, the Great War. Well, we met Damon. That that project, um, we did a 25 hour day. So I came in at 8 o'clock and went home at 9 o'clock. I'm um, sorry, not up in the morning next day. So that was quite fun. Um, but obviously, I get asked this question all the time. What's my favorite? My favorite show I've worked on. Um, being in Kids of the 90s, um, Power Rangers was pretty cool. And to be able to work on the, the new Power Rangers, that was, the, that was pretty much the dream come true. Um, I was going to the States to go to Dragon Con one year. Um, I happened to walk past the, the workshop manager. I saw the, the poster of the Power Rangers concept on his wall. I was like, ooh, are we, are we making that? He said, oh yeah, we might be. Well, when I come back home, can I jump to the costume department and give this a go? You know, I'll make costume in my free time and figure it out. So I came back home and um, got told to report to the costume department, and there was the Red Ranger on my desk. In the inside, I was like, holy shit. I was trying to act cool on the outside. Yeah, I got this. Don't worry, guys. Um, the second one on the on the list had to be uh, Mulan. Obviously, being part Chinese, um, and able to work on a Disney film, that was pretty cool as well. And to be an extra in the movie for six weeks as well, that was quite cool. Um, um, I was wearing a costume to send pictures to production over in Disney. Um, and Richard Taylor walked past the photo, photo studio one day. He said, oh, you look cool in that costume, right? You could be in the movie. I was like, no, man, I'm just around, I'm just sitting around all day on set, you know, just being bored every day. But as the shoot days got closer and closer, I was like, ooh, you know. What's the odds of making the costume for the movie and making all the pops for the movie and to be able to wear the stuff I've made and be in that film as well? So I think about two weeks out before they start shooting, I um, emailed the, the casting director, hey, my name is Sonnet, um, I work at Weather Workshop, um, I'm Asian, can I please be in this movie? <laughs> so that's how I got started. That's pretty cool. So while you're on set working on Milan, did you have anything to do with the art department and maintaining the costumes or fixing costumes or anything like that since you worked on them? I tried, so I was down there for, I was down in Queenstown for six weeks. I tried my best to keep on the DLO for a week. I told no one that we were shot for a week. And then a couple of guys know, a couple of guys that I was extra with they knew. Um, and one of, the, one of the scene we were lining up and it was like 25 degrees, man. It's like, you know, it's hot. So I was in a hit with the cheese, I took the helmet off. And one of the costume men is yell out at me, Oi, you, the guy in front, put your, put your helmet back on. You damn extras just keep taking your helmet off. You guys have no idea how to put it back on again. <laughs> <laughs> so I just laughed, and one of the guys go, Um, he made this shit. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> and she's like, What? Yeah, I'm working with her. I said, Oh, shit, sorry. <laughs> so it, it was funny. I mean, like, it's, I try to keep that stuff on the D-Lo, but it's nice to be treated the same as the other guys. But after that day, pretty much when there's issues with the costume while we're lighting up, they say, oh, sorry, can you fix it up, please? You're there already. Oh, sure, man, so I should be double pay, yeah. <laughs> Think about this, I should be invoice them for all my time down there fixing costume as well. With your cosplay background and your work at Weta being a lot of the same skill sets. Does one help influence the other, or do you pick up techniques while you're working on one thing and then bring it into your work, or vice versa with cosplay? Or they kind of go back and forth. Obviously, cosplay got me a job with it. That, that's, that was a, that's a big thing. And while I'm near, I guess um, because I'm always making, so I'm always practicing. So. And for, I guess for Weta, that's a good thing, because I'm experimenting with different stuff, and the cosplay community is so, is so vast, and people do so many things that if we are making something for the movies, and there's certain techniques that I've seen before that someone else made, I can bring it into the movies as well. Um, the funniest one that, that I'm surprised that Weta didn't pick up is just using like, um, tin foil and masking tape to make a pattern. They were, they were doing straight masking tape straight away and peeling it off and trying to make sure not to peel off the masking tape. And I said, rips. I'm like, it just, it was too foil. Like, <laughs> that was quite funny. When I first, my first way I got there, I was making 
the, the red ranger's um, chest piece, and I got some tin foil off in the kitchen. I started wrapping up the body. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? I said, I'm making a pattern. Tin foil, yeah. They had no idea. So I was like, oh my god. So yeah, so believe it or not, um, the cosplay world does influence the movies quite a bit. When, you're, when you have new and younger cosplayers coming up to you, either on the con floor or in the booth, and they're asking you how you make things and how to start and how to get into cosplay, is there any piece of advice that you'll go to? I know you like to, you're currently promoting working with cardboard as a sort of starter and a base layer kind of thing. Is there, can you talk us a little bit through that? Um, the whole cardboard thing started off about five years ago. There was a, um, a maker fair in Wellington. I had my little booth there. I had all my costume on display. Um, and the family came up to, to, to the booth and the mum went, hey, my daughter, she's nine. She loved making stuff. What should we start? What, what do you use? And I said, start with cardboard. She laughed at me, cardboard? That's not what you use. I said, that's, what I, that's how I started. So that's how I kind of got started. And then obviously, um, I've been involved with um, Babita, it's a place in Wellington where they teach kids how to craft, how to make stuff. And the reason why cardboard's there is because with this day and age, how everything's so expensive now, you know, I want to able that a family can have fun together. And cardboard's pretty much free. You know? and, and cardboard's such a good, versatile material as well. And if you can make anything out of cardboard, you can make out anything. And it's so much fun, man. You know, if you make a mistake with cardboard, just throw it away and start again. If you make a mistake with a piece of warbler, <laughs> then you have to, have to pay another dollar to another teacher. I know you're also, outside of your work at Weta and your work as a cosplayer and all that kind of thing, you also teach at the New Zealand Drama School. Uh, how's that and what's that like as sort of providing the information for the next generation of makers who you might end up working with in the future. It's so much fun, you know, it is, as I said, like, the teaching kind of goes both ways. And like, it's quite funny, like, when, when you break something down, and you kind of like, you're teaching yourself at the same time, because sometimes when I do stuff, I just do it subconsciously, and you just do it when you want to do it. When you're trying to teach someone, and you try and, you try and slow yourself down, you eat up end up teaching yourself how to do it again. And sometimes you see the students might have misheard how you say it, but their stuff is way better. Yeah, oh sweet, that's cool, I said that. <laughs> it's quite cool as well. And obviously, um, as you guys know, um, I have a little baby Rose now. And um, since, I had, since Rose came along, my whole purpose, you can say, for the whole cosplay community has kind of changed a bit. It's really about trying to teach the joy of making now and try to make it fun for everyone. And being a toy is kind of cool as well because like, I see, I wish I had that when I was studying at the time. And like, like, just to have a place where you can go and just make cool stuff, which is pretty cool. And the students there are awesome as well. And toy is great, but they kind of teach you real skills. You know, where sometimes you go to a school where they might ask you to make something, but they will be used for anything. It's just there to be to be marked on. But with Toy Fikati, with the students in, in costumes or props, they make a piece of like props or costumes there for a production that will happen maybe three, four months' time. The deadlines are really short, just like the film industry. Um, the problems are just like the film industry. So the students who come out of Toy Fikati, they are more equipped to work in industry than most other students who come out of different schools. So that's what I love about that school. And you work there as well, so it's quite good. Uh, if, anybody, if anybody's come in late, if you, anybody has any questions for Sana at any point during this panel, come on down, we'll see if we can answer them for you. But while we wait on anybody who has any questions, uh, do you have any plans for future cosplays for Little Rosie coming forward? She's almost getting to the age where you can start dressing her up. I know, and she's... We put her in my helmet a few months ago, and she didn't seem to bother too much by it, so that's a good sign. Um, um, 
Before Rose was born, I was like, she's a boy, just be her costume. This is a girl, be her costume. So if she was going to be a boy, I was going to be Hulkbuster, and he could be a little Iron Man on my chest. Um, if she was a girl, I'll, I'll be the little, little make-up alien, and she could be Ripley in there. So, but, but saying that now, Rose is quite wiggly. So she really quickly, so I'm not quite sure that's going to work because she doesn't want to stay still, so I can do plan B and find something else for that one, I think. Uh, how about looking at some of her favourite movies and making her something out of one of those? I wish she, I mean, like, she loved Disney, um, Disney Plus. She loved Encantos, so for her first birthday, we had Encanto birthday party, and I made her a little door, and, and I'm pretty sure that was quite cool. She loved Coco. So we'll see what she's like for her second birthday, see what she likes. Maybe I'll put her in something for her second birthday. And her birthday is on the 30th of October as well, so it's pretty close to Halloween, so she knows. But, um, what age did you start cosplaying, and then what? I mean, like, um, as, I'm going, as I'm writing my book, um, I went to, went to Mum's house and I found my old photos when I was younger. Um, I think there was one when I was nine. Um, when I first came here, um, obviously St. Patrick's Day wasn't a thing back in Thailand. <laughs> um, I came here and I got told to have to go to school next day with a costume, have to be green. So guess what I made? The Green Ranger. Out of, yeah. out of cardboard and, um, and green rubbish bags and staple guns. So I remember that really vividly right here. Yeah, so, and um, what, what inspired me? Um, I don't know, I mean like, we, before I started cosplaying, making costumes, I was quite scared. I've seen guys like Andrew Cook, you know, guys on the um, Star Wars, um, Fire First, and guys in the Halo group, they have such amazing costume. I never thought in my wildest dream I'd be able to make these things. Um, I don't know, I guess it's, just seeing those guys having so much fun at conventions kind of inspired me to, to give it a go. And now that I'm in that scene, I'm still, constantly inspired by people out there and I'm, that, I'm on my phone flipping through my Instagram and I'm like how does this person you know, have more life than I do? This stuff is amazing. So you kind of inspiration kind of go in circle in the whole community really, you know. Obviously inspired by all well, the film I watch. Every time I watch the movie, my, my list of stuff I want to make just go up, 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 up. Yeah, I hope they answer your question. Um. I know you said that you work mostly on the harder stuff, but do you have any tips on sewing? Sewing? Yes. Mm. Uh, um, I guess for me, like, one thing that I wish I've learned for sewing is um, able to make patterns. Can you make your patterns? That, that's, if everyone would in it, oh, okay, sorry. Patterns is such a good skill to have because, like, with us in the film industry, you always have to make it to fit the actor, right? What happened was we always get the body scanned and active first before we do anything to make sure that everything we make will fit them perfectly. If you can learn pattern making skills, it's going to go a long way. Obviously layering is really important. Um, I found most cosplayers, when they make a costume, it's always just one or two layers. When you look at movie industry, um, especially with stuff for like Marvel, uh, some of DC now, this is about four or five layers. And if you can layer it, layer it, texture, look about the way shadow is going to look in your costume, the way light is going to catch it, it's going to make you really pop out. It's proud. How many movies have you worked on? What was your favourite? Jeez, I've done quite a few now. I've been here for nine years. Uh, I'm going to put a number up there. I'm going to say about 12. Um, favourite? I said it's still Power Rangers, but I was for the next thing to come up, Upon the Forever is pretty cool. It was such a, a cool, something different to work on. And obviously like the whole Avatar series, is, um, I've done stuff for the third movie that I can't talk about. It looked it look amazing. When they come out, you guys are going to love it. Hello. Um, so, you've worked on both Avatar and Upon the Forever. Yep. As the designer for like, the outfits and that. What was it like making the outfits for someone like name or, or even just like Mbaku and having like some of the like cultural design aspects of it? It's, it was pretty cool. Obviously like um, I'm not the designer, I'm just a fabricator. So we get, oh, we, get, we get the design from someone else. 
Um, what's been cool about Embarku and Nemo is that um, obviously Embarku is already been well established in the first Black Panther, but the one that we made was the one with the gorilla face in it. Um, that was pretty cool. Um, Putty, the guy in the props, he actually sculpted that out of real wood. So that was pretty cool. So it looked real, but it was real. Um, Namor was an interesting one, because we knew there wasn't going to be much to his costume. And it's, it's really, for us, it's really important that because he's going to be in the water as well. What we don't realize is we have Nicholas there. There's a piece of, piece of like those, those invisible bar straps to go in here to keep that down when he's swimming as well. Just keep bar straps here. Um, obviously, like, the challenge is to, to make his headpiece the all the kelp. That, that was quite cool to work that out. Um, and the wings, we, we had about four different tries for the wings. I did joke around that we could like um, stay, uh, stay at Seagull and take them all from the wings, but no one liked that, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then it was cool. I said, like, um, obviously, like, we all know El Aquaman <coughs> from, from DC, and Namor was, wasn't really much of the, the main character. And see him finally come up and see his concept come up. That was pretty cool. So we did both this costume, the one you're wearing now, and the ceremonial one as well. Um, I had more of a role on the ceremonial one, so I did the prototype for, for that. Um, and we did all this. It's just really cool to have some like Aztec and Mayan, um, with something we have done before. It's quite cool. We've done a lot, a lot of European, but not really much on the, on the South American side. Cool. Thanks. Um, yeah. My second question would be, what is your favorite outfit that you've made that you just look at and you're just like, this, this is it, this is my favorite, I'm right here? Well, if, let's say this one, I wish, if I can steal it, I would. <laughs> um, it's, it's definitely, um, I've got to say the, um, the Thor, Love, God and Thunder, that was pretty cool. The one, the extreme, the extreme Thor, when, when he got changed in first for the helmet. Um, that was super challenging because that, quest, that costume had to be flexible but shiny at the same time. So if anyone here ever try to make a costume that's shiny and flexible, it's really hard because when you move it, the paint always cracks. So the guys in the paint department, has, they found this paint where it's super flexible. Yeah, you know, his arm, when he flexes, it doesn't crack. So if I, I would steal a costume, that one was pretty cool because it's just it's just a tank. So it looked also in the corner of my lounge anyway. <laughs> Hi. So my question is a bit more about um, weather workshops. Yep. It's as I mentioned before, we've been working there for nine years or so. And my question is how much interaction do you as a um, costume designer have with all of the other Departments like special effects and all that sort of stuff. Um, so the special effects, the Wizard Digital is a different company now. But when you come to Wizard Workshop, what's really unique about our company is good things under one. What's going on? We, we could design the finished production. So, for example, if I'm making a piece of armor and I'm not quite sure what the little squiggle is. I just walk down the corridor and go, hey, what's this? You know, if, if there was somebody from LA, I have to email them, hey, what's going on? It'll take two days to come back to us. And because we do all the mold making, all the casting, all the painting in store as well, it's really worthwhile for me to know as a costumer, when I'm making something, what's my next steps going to be? What's the last steps going to be? So everything we do will work, to work with each other rather than trying to fight against each other pretty much, so it's really nice. And what's cool about Wither is it's such a big family, people are willing to share the information, that what makes the whole place work as well. So that's really cool. Thank you. Hi, my question is, how do you gain confidence in cosplay? How? Um, funny or not, is um, just get out there, right? I mean, when I first started cosplaying as Colin my know, I refused to show my face for four years. Every costume I made would have a helmet because I was so self-conscious. It's hard enough to post with your body, you have to post with your face as well. I was like, nah, nah, nah. So every, helmet, every costume I made deals with the helmet. 
And then one day I said, you know what, you know, if I want to make this spicy Thai thing more of a, more of a, like, well, just a hobby, a bit more of like a, a real thing, I have to be confident enough to show my face. And it's hard. I understand sometimes I guess I still get quite anxious now, taking photos, visual people walking past me, I'm like, oh, do I look crappy? Is my fly up? Is my fly down? You know? <laughs> just the way it is, man. But I know I check with the time. I, um, but I see like, you just have to be out there and surround yourself with friends as well. You know, especially when you're cosplaying, don't, don't do it by yourself. You know, do it with friends, because like, when you're posting with friends, it's, it's a lot more fun. Have, you know, have, have friends take your pictures, but they will give you, hey, your ankle's not quite right. So I said, just get out there, right? You know? And it is a safe space, and you, people will look after you. Thank you. Um, what's your favorite cosplay that you've made like, for yourself? It's still my Thai armor. It's because it's, it's, my, it's my own. Every time I make a costume, I like to design my own because my work is to copy someone else's design. And why should I do it in my own free time as well? And that one is probably the most proudest because it's, it's pretty much me in a costume. Um, but every time you make a new costume, like what I'm, working, I'm making now, my, my Chinese, I'm part Chinese as well. I'm a Chinese Mando, that's is my favorite as well. I know it's like, what's your favorite child? It's really hard to choose, you know? Like my Reaper, it just looked cool because I, I work as a team with Victoria and with um, Johanna. Um, it's almost like every costume that I made is a story to them, you know. But my Thai armor is definitely the, my favorite. Just a second question. Um, yeah. What's like the hardest one that you've made for yourself? It is probably the Reaper to work as a team. Um, teamwork is really good, but sometimes it can be really hard. So it's really important when I was asked to put together a New Zealand team to go to the Australian comp for the Overwatch um, competition that I had to choose the people I can trust and the people I know that I can work with. That's why Victoria and Johanna was the first that came to mind because they're both half working and it's about how you divide um, each aspect uh, of the costume and you're able to trust them that they will, they will do their part while you do your part. I think that's the most challenging because like most of the time when you're a cosplayer you by yourself. And if you don't do the next step, you can't blame anyone else but yourself. But in this case here, we have a deadline to make sure we get to Australia in time and this costume to be done in time. And to be able to trust the next person next to you is really important and also the hardest one as well. Hope that helps. Thank you. Character concept before. You know, something totally different from everything else out there. All the time. In my, in my iPad, there's thousands of original drawings that I haven't made yet. I, mean, I can't, as I said, like uh, when I first heard about Wooden Workshop, I was going to apply as a concept artist. So I gotta say, at least every month, I'll have a new costume in my iPad. I just constantly draw all the time. Even now, I'm at home, I watch TV, I just get an iPad out, I just draw it. If now, add to my list, I'll make that eventually. <laughs> And when they, when you bring these characters to life, you've yeah. obviously thought about the emotions and the, how they act and how they portray themselves and whether they're good or evil or, you know, the confidence that they have, you know. Yeah. I mean, like, one thing, like, I do find it difficult to call myself a cosplay because um, I'm not always in character. I'll be in character for that one moment where the picture's taken. I will be. But when I'm walking around, I'm just being me, unfortunately. <laughs> but I say, but when I... If you ask me about the costume, I will explain, look, there's a reason why his armor is done this way. Because there is, there is background, there is backstory to every character I do. But when I'm wearing it, I most of the time I'll be me, but when you guys are taking the picture, then I'll, I'll be the character for that split second. So you're not the method actor? No, no. 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 I'm, I'm, I'm no actor. Um, I'm more of a maker than a cosplayer. That's what I find quite hard to, to put myself in the whole cosplayer tag. I'm not a traditional cosplayer. I'm more of a maker who wear my costume because I kind of have to wear it. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. You're um, So obviously a lot of your designs are, your, your, like you said, your own personal designs and, and makes. If you could make something from like a movie or a show or a, something, what's your like ultimate make from something that you have seen like made? 
it that you would recreate. I still want to make something big. A car oh. big. I said like a Jaeger big. No, no, not the Jaeger. You know what I mean? You know, like big, big, big soup. I mean, like I had this crazy thing where, you know, when the first Pacific Rim first came out, I had talked to a friend of mine. Let's make a Jaeger. Let's make a um, a kaiju. We'll meet at the I'm getting we have a best battle in the middle. Crazy idea. Um, I mean, like, I see a Gundam. I'll be something that I'll probably make one day. Um, I love gun, Gundam wing, but I'm not making that wing. It's just, it's just way too big. So I'll, I'll probably find something where it, it's, it looks slim and small enough, but cool enough that I will make. But I think a Gundam would be one that I'll make sooner or later. Right, well, how would you do that? Thanks, man. It's been... Yeah, for me, it would be uh, Battle Me. Probably most people know him from the game Meat Quarry, but they had a lot of books back in the 90s. Oh, yeah. Um, I was just thinking for anybody who doesn't already know, um, maybe wants to make some friends or bounce ideas off people, learning maybe you could share about Cosplay New Zealand a little bit. Yeah, um, in, in what way? In share to the world or share well, around? Well, let them know yeah, I mean, how like, to we get like, more uh, cosplay yeah, in New Zealand. I mean, like, the, the Facebook page is so good, you know. If you can join a Facebook page and you just you put your question out there, I guarantee you it'll be at least a dozen people will come up with, with an answer. Or even just private message them, you know. I find it a lot more easier to private message someone. If you see someone make something that you enjoy, their style, the way they make something, not have, just part of them, look, I love how you make this costume, can you please explain how you make it? For me, I think you probably get more of a, um, a positive feedback than to do a big group, sometimes do a big group post. But if you find, this is for example, if you like how I make my warbler, just message me. If you like how someone does a sewing, just message them straight away, I think it's more, more better that way. Yeah, and just to add that Dunedin, um, Wellington, Auckland, Hamilton, yes. Christchurch also have their own local groups yep. on Facebook, so yep. Canterbury Cosplay. Yep. The Canterbury Library now has laser cutters, 3D printers and all sorts of resources. So we run a craft night, or I don't, but some of the others run a craft night um, once a month there. Um, so Canterbury Cosplay on Facebook as well. Yeah, man. I said, like, if, if you find scars in your local area, you can like find out what's going on. And as I said, like, it's, it's all about just teaming up. You know, do it as a group. You enjoy doing it together, then you will you will craft together. It's way more fun that way. Cool. There are no, no other questions. We've got about ten minutes left. So if you do have any more questions, come on down. When you go back and look at some of the stuff you've made in the past, is there ever anything you want to remake? Or I know when we were putting you into Reaper for the first time in a few years last week, you, you and Victoria were both looking at some of your decisions and yep. realising they weren't Bad the decisions. best decisions at yep. the time? Yeah. Every time, I guess. It's one thing you look back. I guess when you look back at the costume, you always think, you know, Five years ago, this is my skill set. You know, if I were to make it now, what's going to be like? I think for me, it's not because it was bad; it's because to see how much I improved. When I first started, um, I made the Halo Magnum every year, just to see how much I've grown. And what I did is, well, I kept my first helmet and my first gun I made ten years ago. Let's have it there as a reminder. But I mean, let's go back. I have planned to do another Thai armor, just a, a Mark II, um, and that's pretty much it really. I mean, like, it's always like, it'd be cool to go back to remake it, but, but why? I've done it once already, and I've got so much I want to make, my list is like so long, it'd be hard to go back. I, mean, like, I might go and tweak it so I can wear it again, like for the Reaper, I wish I'd go back and you know, redid the shoulder so it's more comfortable, but I would remake the whole costume again. Cool. Is there a particular piece of costume or piece of armor that you like making most of all? It's the helmets. Helmets are cool. There's 
probably won't because it's easier to keep the helmet. If you make a whole costume, you can find storage for it. If you make a helmet, you have to hold war helmets and it's still cool. Um, and I always believe if you can make a helmet, you can make anything. Um, it's such a, a weird shape. And if you can conquer that weirdness, you can make a chest piece, you can make a ball drink, stuff like that. The one thing that would make a helmet is that most of the time I know I should not make it first. You, know, you always should make something that's not too difficult first, but it's almost more fun to make than the helmet's first, man. I don't know why. For those of you who don't follow Sunnet on social media, he does regularly post pictures of different helmets that he's making. And if you ever get a chance to go into his studio, there are just helmets everywhere on the walls, on the shelves. Some of them finished, some of them half finished. Uh, there, do you have any helmets that you've like put aside that you do want to go back and finish at any point? I do have the casting of a Man Warren in a Phase 2 trooper. Which is hard, because like, which, I've got a phase two, which one am I going to do? There's so many of them. Am I going to do original paint job? Am I going to do Rex? Am I going to do Cody? Am I going to do Fox? I mean, well, what do I do? So I was still trying to, like, ah! So I just keep it there for now until one day I might do a boat. Which one should I make, guys? And I'll, and I'll do that at the moment. Just sitting there, nice and white, nice and pretty. I'll get to it when I get to it. Um, just going to ask, what's your um, favourite medium or material to, to use when you're making um, props or, or armour, and do you have any like, tips and tricks of how to use it? Um, I think it's, I do use everything, but the one my most favourite I'm known for is definitely warbler. Um, I know that warbler can be quite expensive, I understand that. But the reason why I like it so much is because um, of, you can always reduce it. You know, if you have offcuts, you know, EVA foam, you have to throw it away. Warbler, you heat up again, put it through a pastry maker, just carry on. Um, there's no contact glue as well. EVA foam, contact glue can be quite smelly and quite toxic. With um, Warbler, it's pretty much just um, a heat gun as you're all good to go. I see that I use Warbler again, but when it comes to my favourite one that I go to all the time, it's always Warbler. It's great for us here in New Zealand, but it's not that hot. If I lived in the States where it's super hot, you know, obviously walk up on work for you, it would just it'd be like walk everywhere. You mentioned briefly just in that piece that contact glue can be a little bit smelly and sticky. Can you just have a quick chat about the health and safety around using some of this stuff? Yeah, I mean, like, we all, as amateur sparklers, we have to normally work at home, right? We have to think about our loved ones as well. When I first started, I used to use a um, kicker in the house. You know, that was really bad, I know now. You know, it's best to research stuff you use. You know, if you're going to be crafting in the kitchen or in the lounge, if you're using contact glue, it's best to go outside, put the mask on. You can use this spray can, once again, go outside. Because, unfortunately, the best stuff to use is probably the most toxic stuff, unfortunately. And it's really important to look after ourselves and then to look after our families as well at home. Um, and once again, eye, eye protection, um, I can be quite bad at some time using a Dremel. Put the, put the glasses on, put the face mask on. I know sometimes you're just in a hurry, you want to get this done quick and you just go for it. But you only got two pairs of eyes and you have to protect them as much as you can. Cool, we've only got a couple of minutes left, so if anybody has any last minute questions, come on down. Uh, if you think of a question that you might have for him later or tomorrow, he does have a booth out on the main floor. Go down, have a chat to him. He is busy working on one of his armors <laughs> while in the booth, yep. so you can see how he works and you can have a chat to him about the way he works and all of that kind of stuff. Highly suggest going and having a look. He's got a couple of his armor pieces there that he's working on. They're great to have a look at up close, and while you're looking at them up close, he can answer any questions about them. Oh, we've got one more question. What's your favourite helmet? Oh, helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Asking the hard questions. I know, I reckon that. Eh? I reckon Nova. Even though I like to um, make stuff by hand, but that Nova helmet, it just looked cool. You know, um, that one, once again, that was a teamwork as well. 
Um, some of the wizard, he was a 3D modeler. Um, he helped me. Also, I still made it from um, from foam first. I see. Um, so we have foam first, and he 3D scanned it, 3D modeled it, and then we 3D, 3D printed it, and we lifted up as well. So it was pretty cool. And that's a cool number to have. Yeah, Nova. Nova is my followed by. That's scary uh, Japanese um, body mask. That's, that's pretty cool. You guys pass the book, you see it. Um, what I like about that guy is his freaky EVA phone here that, that I made. It's quite funny. I made that in like three or four days as well, so it's pretty fun. Cool. So we've got no more questions. We will be wrapping up now. Uh, can I give a big round of applause for Simon?